yes uh, dr jagdish uh, yes sir i think we should start now yeah we should start yeah uh, welcome back all the participants for the uh, day one first session of amei mm uh, 2022 conference <clears throat> the day one the first keynote lecture will be delivered uh, by professor rawl from uh, portugal and he will be deliver the title of talk on multifunctional and multi scale uh, fiber based materials and composites uh, already uh, professor rawl sir is already with us now uh, before his talk i request now uh, dr nv swami naidu sir to uh, brief uh, read the profile about the today keynote speaker so over to you sir yeah uh, thank you dr jagdish it's a immense pleasure to introduce uh, professor rao in this uh, uh, conference regarding the keynote uh, speaker so professor rao is currently professor and senior researcher in the school of engineering at the university of minho portugal he is a director of the department of mechanical engineering and the head of the center for textile science and technology of the same university with expertise in advanced materials like nano smart composites and structures 3d oxide and multi scale with 45 research researchers he is the mentor and the coordinator of the uh, fiber fiber mechanics and institute of innovation on fiber based materials and composites including 350 partners developing promotion uh, dissemination technology transfer and uh, research activities on fiber based advanced materials he has more than 223 published papers in international reputed scientific journals 450 conference publications 36 books and 40 patents he is the scientific coordinator of several national and international research projects on advanced fibers and composite materials mainly for building defense architecture and healthcare applications he supervised various phd and postdoc scientific works and is the chair of ox defense world conference on advanced materials for defense and icnf that is international conference on natural fibers rawl professor rawl is founder of the wanfr that is world association of natural fibers research member of editorial board of several leading international scientific journals on composite and fibers materials and member of several working groups of the european defense agency and nato so thank you sir for being with us so i'm overing to you sir thank you very much for your kind introduction good morning everyone from portugal i know is good afternoon there in india uh, so it's a great pleasure to be here with you thank you very much for the invitation great pleasure and great honor to uh, share what we are doing here in portugal at university of minho in fiber dynamics on this, uh, advanced fiber based materials and composites so i will try to share my screen Uh, is already there or not yeah it's sharing sir just uh, uh, share your presentation okay yeah it is the yeah it's already are you seeing already yes, the presentation yes, yeah okay so let me try to put full screen yeah perfect sir oh. are you seeing the slides moving <laughs> yes yeah. sir yes sir yeah. okay that's great okay so let's start so uh, my topic today is uh, multifunctional and multi scale fiber based materials and composites 
As uh, has been said in the introduction, I am the, uh, working for the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Minho. I am director of this department. I am um, also the head of Fibernamics, which is the Institute for Innovation in Fiber-Based Materials and Composites. And I am um, also serving as director of Center for Textile Science and Technology. Um, so w within these um, departments and uh, infrastructures at the University of Minho, we are developing um, advanced knowledge on uh, mainly on fiber-based materials and composites. And today I want to share some of the things we are doing here on this uh, topic. So let me um, uh, introduce a little bit to what is Fibernamics. Uh, ten years ago, we started with this uh, international platform that now is uh, an institute um, in order to link the universities with uh, companies and with society. So um, we have, uh, I, I will say, an integrated view of uh, innovation. So this is, we have the research centers to produce knowledge. Uh, then we have these platforms, this uh, as uh, working as an interface of the university with uh, society, with companies. And within this uh, Fibernamics, what we are doing is to do research, development and innovation on fiber-based materials and composites. So the idea is not just to have um, papers and presentations in conference, patents and so on, but to convert this knowledge into products and the, into technologies that can be used by companies and then by individual end users in several applications. And we are quite lucky on that because uh, we are working with fantastic materials. These fibers, fibers are really uh, interesting materials and with a large range of applications because one important thing on fibers is that they, they can be tailored in terms of the properties. And this is uh, very interesting and uh, put us uh, many challenges in terms of uh, um, their functionalities, their shape, their uh, uh, um, intrinsic properties and so on. So what we are doing here is something like this. I'm, I'm trying to summarize in this scheme. So what our knowledge is, is on these uh, elements that are fibers from different origins. We may have them natural, but we can extrude them with uh, tailored properties based on um, polymers or other materials. And then being able to combine these properties of fibers in different structures. So to come up with uh, different fibrous arrangements in order to have some different properties and different behaviors of these materials. And then, of course, the possibility of combining these compo this, uh, fibers and structures in composite materials uh, with other uh, polymeric matrices or either uh, cementitious matrices, and from that to address the, the um, uh, specifications of several, several applications, as you can see here, uh, from civil engineering to medical implants to building to sport uh, applications for protective applications and so on. Because as I said, we are working with these uh, elements that uh, have uh, interesting, uh, very interesting properties. So what are, what are we looking for in our um, uh, activity, research activity? So of course we have, uh, at least from my point of view, leading all these uh, um, departments and uh, research uh, centers and institutes, we need to have a strategy for this. As we have the knowledge and if we want to, to um, uh, contribute for advance of low knowledge in this area, we need to know what is the future, what is the challenge, what are the challenges, and we have to face them. So, and for these materials, we, are, we, are, we have defined these three pillars as the main important pillars for our uh, research activities. So, Usually we say that we are addressing sustainability using um, eco-materials and uh, during, during the introduction you've seen that I'm organizing since uh, 2013 one of the leading conferences on natural fibers in order to address this part of sustainability and so we bring together all the scientific community on these uh, natural materials, natural based materials and they have also fantastic properties for different kinds of applications. And then, of course, 
to look for performance and when we are looking for other type of applications in aeronautics in uh, uh, um, aerospace in defense for instance we have some this pillar of performance is quite important even for medical applications and we are usually we are looking at the nanoscale of the fibers and uh, at the nanoscale of functionalization of this uh, these materials which is very important and then this third pillar that is the the smart so to give the materials the the, the ability of adapt to a, a, a certain um, environment and to have fibers with these characteristics but then when we come up to the structure so we are talking about single elements but usually we have to structure these single elements in some way uh, so we are do, we are looking for these three multi uh, areas multi dimensions this is multi scale multi function and multi material so multi scale because we can tailor the properties of the material from the nano scale to the macro scale and you will see several ex examples on this but uh, we can give having this approach to to input this uh, multifunctional characteristic in the material so to have one material but with different uh, uh, functionalities and then for some for most of the applications we are addressing we in our research the multi-material is always very important because we have to combine either at the nano scale or macro scale but to combine also different materials for to address the specifications of applications so this part of multi-scale for us is very important um, you know fibers the we can produce fibers at nanoscale and we can functionalize tailor these fibers with the nanoparticles to give them the the right the right properties so the integration of the the nano micro meso macro scales that is very important to come up with uh, interesting solutions and and the future uh, advent advanced knowledge on this area and we are to, we are not doing nothing very new uh, because nature is doing this naturally and what we are doing is just to look at nature and to understand that nature is uh, working at different scales and uh, have a great performance based on this on this approach so uh, what i want to say is that uh, multi-scale is very very important now in terms of the things we are doing here and some examples of what we do from the, the nano scale to macro scale. So as you can see here, we are able to start with the uh, uh, macro fibers, uh, as you can see here in this microscope uh, um, figure. Uh, but then we can place nanoparticles onto the surface or uh, onto the surface of this, uh, these fibers to give, for instance, with silver nanoparticles, to give these, fi these initial fibers with intrinsic properties based on, uh, on their uh, polymer-based material. But then we can have other functionalities based on this functionalization with, uh, with nanoparticles, which, which is very important because we can come up with different functionalities for this. But we can do more. So we can have already the fibers and functionalize them. Or we can use uh, techniques like electrospinning, which is give us the possibility to produce nanofibers, fibers at nanoscale. And at the same time, when producing these fibers, to um, functionalize them with uh, nanoparticles again. And you can see here several mats of fibers with um, different diameters and uh, um, functionalized some way with other nanoparticles, with graphene, for instance, and I'm showing I will show some examples about that, but just to show the possibilities, the range of possibilities we have, we may have to tailor the properties of these fibers. And then, of course, as I said before, we can come up with this multi-scale approach in composites as well. As you can see here, for instance, in the left image, we have epoxy carbon, carbon fibers and CNT, so this is carbon nanotubes. So it means that we may have as you can see here, these actually oriented, completely parallel elements that are carbon fibers. But then we can improve the properties of this uh, composite in, impregnated with a matrix, with epoxy matrix, by um, uh, adding, by functionalizing this material with uh, carbon nanotubes in order to enhance the mechanical properties, in order to give electrical properties to this material and uh, 
to put it working as a sensor, for instance, but working always at macro, at, at multi-scale approach for this. But we are doing this with uh, polymeric matrices, but also with uh, cement issues based matrices. matrices. This is possible as well. As you can see here, uh, we have a cement issues matrices. We have a sisal fiber, so a natural fiber here used. And then we have elements of microcrystalline cellulose that is at other scale in order to improve the, the, um, the microstructure and the way all these materials work together when uh, loads are applied or, or when applied in, in, uh, in a specific uh, situation. But then we can use, for instance, uh, textile techniques in order to come up with complex architectures of the materials and when Tokyo and this is of course at macro scale so at the fiber level we can tailor the properties but also when we are um, intervening uh, weaving or uh, knitting the, all these fibers in a, a complex arrangement in a complex architecture again we can give the shape but at the same time to control the properties of all of the uh, these fibers and to to address to to orient for a specific uh, end use of the of the material and and uh, uh, so as you can see we are uh, uh, integrating several areas of expertise several uh, techniques in order to come up with uh, solutions but what i'm trying to say here is that the important part for us is to um, be able to control the whole uh, pipeline of the, the development from the fiber itself up to the application based on this multi-scale approach, multifunctional and uh, multi-material uh, thing. So I will show just uh, two or three examples. I don't have time to, to show more, but then I will be glad if you contact me and you can uh, be aware of what we are doing here. So what I put here to, to, to show to you is because this is something we are investing a lot is this aesthetic fiber based materials and composites and um, because we are addressing several applications for this type of uh, strange behavior of materials i guess you all are aware about uh, the aesthetic behavior of uh, of uh, a material but um, just to let you know that an aesthetic material or the aesthetic behavior is based on the negative poisson ratio of the material uh, it means that when uh, we are applying a longitudinal load um, in opposition to a conventional material in an aesthetic material we have also the expansion in the transversal direction or when applying a load in uh, auto plane um, uh, Auto plane, an auto plane force or load, uh, we may see that an aesthetic material is also acting in a different way from the the, the non-aesthetic material, giving the interesting properties to these materials. And as you've seen before, as we are uh, working with fibers and with uh, fiber-based structures, we are able to build this uh, this uh, characteristic to give this characteristic to the material and. This is very, very important for several applications because we can come up with very important characteristics of these, uh, these um, uh, aesthetic fiber-based materials. So we are increasing the shear models, modulus, we, are, uh, we have higher indentation and impact resistance, we have higher fracture toughness, good energy absorption, porosity, permeability, variation with strain as we are... Um, uh, imposing strain in both directions at the same time and uh, we have a synclastic curvature on the on the material this is quite important to for the for applications in terms of uh, energy absorption and impact resistance and um, that's why this type of strange behavior and known conventional behavior of materials is uh, quite is being quite explored for uh, for uh, these impact pro impact applications so in terms of theoretical approach, we have several ways of uh, having this characteristic in the material. Um, so these are the theoretical models, and you can see when pulling the material in one direction, we have the expansion in the other direction at the same time. And just to, to show to you what we are doing based on this, so we, we did uh, several, so this is just a part of uh, research we've, we've been doing with the Portuguese army in order to develop, to develop some of the 
the impact resistance materials. And as I said before, we are able to, to tailor the property of the structure. So we have uh, at the university this uh, um, textile equipments that can um, uh, help us on uh, building the structure in order to have this ascetic behavior, behavior. And then we can impregnate with a, a matrix, of course, if, and then to understand the, the the ascetic behavior to use image analysis in order to understand exactly if we have or not this uh, negative Poisson ratio in the in the material and to characterize all the samples based on uh, these um, uh, fibrous arrangements and impregnated with uh, epoxy matrix and as you can see here uh, because the the tricky thing is to to convert this ascetic behavior we have normally in a fiber based structure but when impregnating this fiber, this fiber structure with a, um, a hard um, polymeric material like an epoxy matrix, matrix to transfer this ascetic behavior to the, the, the final composite we get. And as you can see here, we have, in terms of, um, of um, um, negative Poisson ratio, this NPR, we may see that we have always negative Poisson ratio in this fibrous arrangements. And then, then just for some of the, these structures, we convert this uh, ascetic behavior from the fabric to the composite itself, and uh, which is quite interesting to have this uh, behavior as well. And this, as you can see here, what is the effect of that? Is that because using you have, for instance, the plain grid here in a composite material in terms of energy absorption, you can almost uh, uh, have three times better, for instance, for this foldable structure. So it means that really, in practical terms, we can increase this uh, this characteristic of the material. But we can also use other techniques to have this offset composite that is to, when laminating the composite, to have a specific fiber-based orientations, as you can see here. And we, we, call, we call this technique the angle fly technique. So if we place fibers in uh, certain directions during this uh, laminating of the, of the composite, we may also give the final composite this property of the of the, um, this characteristic of the ascetic material. And as you can see here, so of course we, we may have just unidirectional material, but if for instance if we combine this angle ply ascetic material with layers up from 0, 15, 75, 15, and then the, the opposite, 15, 75, 15, 0, we may give the ascetic behavior. As you can see here, we can give this negative Poisson ratio to the structure. So, and based on the theory, we may improve the characteristics of, the, of this composite material. Um, in terms of impact and in terms of energy absorption. But of course, as I said before, we want to develop materials, but we want to test them and we want to produce products based on, on this, uh, this um, knowledge we are creating on composites and, uh, and the fiber-based materials. And as I said also, um, uh, we are one of the interesting properties of these offsetic materials is this characteristic of impact and energy absorption. So, and we've been testing these impact these materials for the impact behavior uh, using the setup you are seeing here is according to the standards based for from this, and we we had the the involvement of the police and the, the the Portuguese army to do this, and using different bullets in terms of uh, uh, because they are defined also in, uh, in the standards. I don't want to, to, to go into detail on this, but to, of course this is related to the energy absorption. And for, for this part, uh, we, we create, the, we, we, we developed several layers, several materials, including uh, um, polyethylene, high performance polyethylene fibers. But the important part for us was to see the capacity, the, the ability of the our uh, our um, uh, ascetic material to improve the energy absorption of the 
the resist of the, the these solutions not to stop bullets but to uh, improve the energy absorption of the of the of the solution so and these were the the two uh, materials we tried to to we studied in, within this uh, this uh, study and we placed this um, this ausetic material, so the reentrant and star and reentrant uh, Los Angeles, in several places, in several positions, in terms of the number of layers we are using, one to stop the bullet, bullet, and second to improve the energy absorption. And of course, this is the the setup test again, and you can see that after the this is the material, and after the impact. What you see is this back face uh, signature of the material and the deformation, the, the, the impact the bullet is creating in, the, in this, uh, um, this back face material that is using during the test. And these are some of the results we obtained and uh, they are quite interesting because as you see here in uh, sample six, um, we are using Ossetic material, so we are using 90 layers plus 25 layers of different materials, but then we insert one layer of Ossetic of material, and as you can see, we don't have, a, we, we, we do not have a large deformation in terms of the thickness of the, of the material. And if we remove this Ossetic layer, we have a deformation like this. So the back face signature is much more, is higher, much higher in terms of the, of the, the, the deformation of the material. And the, with the ossetic material, we are able to distribute better and the, the, along the surface of the, of the back material in order to not lead to a, a deformation through the thickness of the of this material but in this graph you can see that for these samples so the back face signature signature is here in these two points so we are around uh, 20 millimeters but when removing this ossetic behavior with this ossetic layer you may see that we are beyond the, lim the limit for the back face signature in terms of the standard so it means that the ossetic material is playing a very important role here in the in the in the in the solution. So then we apply this for bulletproof vests, for the the helmet, for the the elbow, and for the for the the elbow elbow and knee pads to to protect the elbow and knees, of course. But again, we came up. With, from the science, we developed the structure, the composite material, the approach we, we, we decide to use based on the ossetic behavior, and then to convert this into interesting uh, products uh, to be used somehow. As you can see here, then, all the tests on these uh, helmets and uh, in terms of mechanical behavior, in terms of ballistics, uh, and fire resistance, and, and so on. So the tests of this material, uh, so we come up with a, uh, um, an helmet with, um, with weight reduction when compared to the, to the others, but uh, also um, uh, with uh, um, complying with uh, the standards, and this is very important for the type of application, so lightweight, moisture management, and temperature. We are using the same approach now for the vehicles and to protect in terms of uh, ballistic and blast impacts. So just to last part of my uh, presentation and talking about other other uh, uh, things we are doing here and coming now to the to the nano scale because we start uh, the, the the other the other example was more on the, the the macro scale based on the on the configuration of fibers to have this ossetic behavior but here uh, we are also talking about the functionalization of fibers with graphene nanoplatelets so to come up to the the nano scale up to then to the macro scale in order to enhance to give other properties and multifunctional properties to these fibers and you, as you can see here, we have a single fiber, then we have uh, uh, graphene nanoplatelets that are being used to functionalize these fibers. And as we know, 
I don't need to say to you, you are all aware about this. Graphene is uh, very interesting in terms of mechanical properties, in terms of electrical properties, uh, but uh, we can give also other functionalities to the material itself. And as you can see here, when one of the things we are electricity to, to be electrical conductive uh, because based on this we can use the principle of PS or resistive response of the material in order to turn these materials into, into sensors beyond the other properties they have normally. And as you can see here when using small amounts of graphene we may go from 1.0.1 uh, up to 4%, we can give the property the material this characteristic. And as you can see here in this graph, what we have here is the a relationship between the deformation of the material uh, under a cyclic load and the, the electrical response of the material at the same time. So in um, uh, orange, you can see the mechanical response of the material in cyclic load and then you have in blue the electrical response of the material at the same time. And as you can see, both curves are following the same pattern, which means that when we define a correlation between uh, these two factors, we can uh, have this material use, being used as a, a sensor to um, sense the formations in the material and, and in, in, in different applications. And this is quite interesting from the because we are giving the material this ability of being used uh, this way but using the same nanoparticles which is uh, uh, um, graphene nanoplatelets um, so we can give other properties to the materials uh, again at the same time so and here we have other three types of uh, of uh, um, functionalities we can insert, we can give to the material based just in this single uh, nanoparticle being used that uh, small amounts as you've seen before. And we can give this UV protection characteristic also because uh, graphene is working as a very interesting UV blocking uh, material as you can see here we have the fibers just with PLA in blue and then we are when we are adding the graphene nanoplatelets we can reduce a lot and uh, increasing the the uv protection of the material but we can also control the hydrophobicity of the material so the surface characteristics of uh, um, absorption absorption of uh, this drop of water weak liquids we can also so um, uh, tailor this properties this uh, response of the surface of the material and then based on that uh, uh, changing the hydrophobicity or the the hydrophilicity of the material and of course based again on the on the uh, uh, nanoparticles the graphene we are using so we can give also the antibacterial characteristic uh, to the material so this is uh, you can see that that uh, here when we have a functional fabric with um, with uh, these nanoparticles we don't have uh, bacteria growing on the, the surface of the of the material having this uh, this characteristic other properties so we have multifunctionality based on uh, a single functionalization with a nanoparticle but as we have um, so we have high electrical conductivity and we can use also that and you, you can see here when increasing the percentage of uh, graphene uh, nanoparticles in the composite material as you've seen before so we can increase also the electromagnetic uh, shielding of the, the material itself which is very important for uh, for other applications so this was my presentation for today i will be glad to answer to your questions but uh, if we don't have time you can always email to me and uh, i will be glad to to reply thank you
Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, now I request uh, our participants to uh, directly ask the questions to sir. Uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask the questions. I just have to plug my battery in otherwise. Yeah, any questions from the participants? <coughs> yeah, Professor Raul, uh, I have a question. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, this is more about the analytical aspect of the fibers, but when it comes to extraction of natural fibers, what methodology yeah. you have adopted? We can we we can use natural fibers as the other types of fibers. Uh, of course, they have intrinsic properties that are not very interesting for uh, these technical applications I've shown here in my presentation. For instance, for uh, uh, for the composite materials, we know that natural fibers cannot compete with carbon fibers. For instance, in terms of the mechanical properties, but uh, or for instance, they are uh, um, absorbing lots of moisture from the environment, and this is not interesting when we are uh, uh, impregnating with the matrix because uh, it's creating uh, it's not creating a very interesting interface between matrix and uh, and the fiber so what we are trying to do and that's why nanotechnology is so important for us is to try to change the characteristics of natural fibers without losing this characteristic this important characteristic which is to be natural and for to address sustainability uh, issues and so on we 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 are uh, e we have we, we need to use this type of material so we can increase the properties using for instance graphene at in in very small amounts in order to increase the mechanical properties and at the same time to avoid for instance that's what i've shown um, to to control the hydrophobicity or the hydrophilicity of the fiber in order to improve their characteristics of course but uh, we cannot compare natural fibers with carbon of course and we have to select very well the application we have we have to to address and then from that to understand the specifications and come up to the the fiber that can be used for that i don't know if i answered the question but uh, Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I have, a, yes, I have one query, sir, regarding the arctic uh, materials. So it is a negative poisonous ratio material. So can you throw some examples uh, about that uh, materials? Here, uh, yeah, um, the aesthetic material. So w what we are doing here is to force the material and the structure to have this aesthetic behavior. So it means we are using signal elements that are fibers. These fibers themselves, they don't have aesthetic behavior. Okay, we yes. can use, for instance, a carbon fiber, or natural fiber, a polyester fiber. But then when we are arranging these fibers some way, we give these structures of fibers this ability of having a negative Poisson ratio. Okay? So, and this is the trick for this. Because you can turn a non-negative Poisson ratio material as the basis for a negative Poisson ratio structure. Which is, which is quite interesting because it's based on the architecture of the fibers and on the orientations of fibers in this uh, architecture. Of course, we have in natural different uh, materials with negative Poisson ratio. For instance, uh, a cat, the, the cat skin presents a negative Poisson ratio, is an ascetic material. Perhaps that's, that's why we say that they have seven lives. Uh, that's because they have this, uh, this, yeah. uh, this skin. Yeah, this is interesting. But the, as I said before, the ability of using a fiber at nano, nanoscale without this intrinsic property and by the structure to give them this characteristic is the way of tailoring of designing these materials with this characteristic. Yeah, I think it is a very tricky uh, arrangement uh, to make your fibers in uh, some different patterns then we may get uh, uh, arctic uh, structures. 
sir is there any Thank ethical you. methods is there any methods or computational methods are available to make use of for this kind of a structures uh, yeah maybe... there, there are this is a, a part of the research we are not addressing in our research group we okay we are more on exp as you've seen we are more on experimental work um, so when we want but, but there are we can use finite element analysis for that of course in order to predict the properties and to 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 design the structures and uh, for composite materials of course this is a technique that is quite used uh, for this and uh, if you have um, expertise on this part perhaps we can collaborate as well because it's something that we are for that particular area we are creating uh, different uh, collaborations with colleagues at the university but uh, all, of yes, course, all around the world because it's something that we don't have inside as we are so okay. experimental so we want to keep this on uh, functionaliz functionalization uh, um, uh, arrangements of fibers tailoring composite materials and so on and this part of the research we are uh, uh, collaborating with other colleagues as well yeah yes sir definitely we'll come back with some collaboration uh, maybe in composite uh, structures generally we'll control with that abd matrix mm -hmm. uh, that is a coupling matrix bending uh, coupling matrix and uh, a structural uh, a stretching matrix and uh, like that so maybe with that uh, we may come back with uh, some arsenic uh, behavior of the materials i hope that will be very nice yes yeah yeah okay sir uh, definitely we will see you uh, we'll see you forward we will looking so we'll meet you sir regarding this so a very, very interesting much. one and so any very interesting uh, arctic structures thank Good, you sir. thank you very much thank you any questions from other participants uh, okay uh, sir i have one question uh, regarding the ascetic material only so you uh, mentioned that uh, the to develop the ascetic materials the fiber should be at nano level not only at nano level you can do it with microfibers do microfibers trick, as I said. yeah the so trick, normally we do is, uh, yeah. uh, while developing a natural fiber based composites like for example mixing of bamboo fiber macro level mm -hmm. Uh, with yes. uh, let us say a PLA material, polylactic acid. Okay. okay. So by using hand layoff technique, we do uh, composite preparation. So okay. uh, in that particular composites, uh, how can we make uh, by implementation Ossetic. of something? Yes, oxetic materials. You have two ways of doing that. One is to work on the fiber architecture. Okay. What you you are doing is to use a fabric perhaps is a fabric is a woven fabric yes. zero ninety degrees is yes yes, so? yes yes sir. that fabric you don't you cannot have um, aesthetic behavior with with that arrangement is impossible okay okay so what you have to do is to go a little bit back before in order to arrange the fibers not in zero ninety but in other different arrangements so that when the fabric is uh, stressed you can have both in both directions you can have the, the deformation of the fabric so this is one way is to uh, work on the fiber architecture at macro scale you don't need to go to nano you may do it at macro scale but you have to need to have a different fibrous arrangement okay you what i'm trying to say you cannot uh, pick just the fabric as it is and to use it to expect to have a, a, an offsetting behavior. So you need to, to arrange the fibers in such a way that when stressed you will have this uh, behavior. This is one of the techniques you can do, so to go to the fibrous architecture. The other way, when you are um, uh, producing your laminate and if you use different layers of these 0 90 materials, you have to need to have an arrangement of the fibers, an orientation of the fibers. Uh, as I, I've shown in my presentation, you have 0, 15, 75, and uh, I don't remember the, the other. But you have four layers with different orientations. And with this, you have also the, the aesthetic behavior. Okay. Okay. 
so different orientation also makes uh, the kind of behavior of us yes okay. of course in this second situation you don't have a so large negative poisson ratio you have a small negative poisson ratio ratio so it means that from the energy absorption point of view you just have a small increase in this property because okay. it's uh, is correlated with uh, the uh, osseticity of the material if you have more osseticity you have more impact uh, absorption uh, so you have always to 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 balance these the two situations okay sir one more questions uh, so okay. what what possibility of uh, research work is still uh, uh, scope is there in ascetic material i mean like you have shown what, yeah what yeah, are the what, still scope of, uh, scope of research yes what we are trying to do now is to have this ascetic material at the nano level nano level as you said so to have already single elements with this ascetic behavior and when for instance to produce nano fibers using that technique as i mentioned that is the electro spinning to have uh, uh, these uh, nano fibers already with this uh, characteristic and then when uh, producing a, st a structure of fibers based this non of nano ascetic materials to transfer this nano nano um, to, to transfer this ascetic behavior to use the structure itself okay because the the problem here is always you and you are you have the pipeline of the processing of the materials the the problem is always to transfer the properties of the material from one step to another okay and uh, what we are trying to do is to have it at nano nano scale itself uh thank you sir uh, uh for your uh, any questions from the other participants okay uh, i think if there is no questions uh, uh, we will conclude the session uh, Uh, thank you uh, thank you very much uh, professor rawl for presenting your precious insights on the topic of multifunctional and multi scale fiber based material and composites sir uh, you have highlighted a various aspects of multifunctional and multi scale fiber based materials and composites uh, basically uh, what is the applications of these materials and how the characterization of this materials to be done uh, he has also highlighted related to sustainability link with the natural fiber based composites different methods possibilities of nano fibers for multifunctional applications and also he has more uh, highlighted on ascetic material which is a, a novel material and his detailed characterization of its and as well as he shown some directions of applications of this ascetic materials Uh, with the uses of natural fiber finally he has also highlighted uh, on carbon nanotubes and graphene nanoplates uh, its types and as well as its different applications sir uh, with this uh, a broad knowledge on uh, uh, sharing of on the multifunctional and multi skill fiber based materials and composites now on behalf of organizing a team of aim eiim 2022 and at raipur will thank you for being with us today and we truly express our gratitude to you for accepting our invitation and also taking out your precious time for sharing your vast experience in the area of composite materials so thank you once again uh, for being with us sir thank you so much thank you it was an honor to be with you and uh, i wish you all uh, a successful uh, conf conference and uh, I I hope to see you in the near near future. Yeah, thank you so much sir. Yeah, not, thank you very much not, sir. Not with thank teams you. but uh, here in Portugal or there in India with you. <laughs> okay sir. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you very much sir. Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day sir. Bye bye. Yes, Jagdish Uh, yes sir i think at 3 o'clock uh, uh, the uh, each and each sections will start yeah yeah just uh, announce that yeah uh, dear participants the uh, keynote lecture 1 is comes to an end now so now i request uh, you all to join your respective sessions
uh, on the set time and the link is also shared through email as well as in the whatsapp group so kindly join exactly sharply at three o'clock in the respective sessions thank you yeah so thank you one and all